Amen. And we Amen. welcome you to Love Alive Ministries this morning. Amen. Amen. We welcome Amen. you to worship the Lord. Amen. I've got a feeling everything's going to be all right. Oh, I've got a feeling everything's going to be all right. I've got a feeling everything's going to be all right. Be all right, be all right, be all right. Oh, the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, he told me everything's going to be all right. Oh, the Holy Ghost, he told me everything's going to be all right. The Holy Ghost, he told me. Everything's going to be all right, be all right, be all right, be all right. I've got a feeling, I've got a feeling, everything's going to be all right. I've got a feeling, everything's going to be all right. I got a feeling everything's going to be all right, be all right, be all right, be all right. Amen. We're going to have scripture by Brother James Turner and prayer by Brother Justin Wright. Amen. Amen. I'll be reading from St. John's, the first chapter through first chapter, first through the sixth verse. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything that was made was made. Amen. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness to the light that all men through him might believe. Amen.
Let us pray, let us pray. Thank you, Lord, that in seasons of distress, that mm. when we need relief, that you're right there, always waiting on that sweet hour of prayer, Lord. Yes, we thank yes. you that you thank bend you. your head down low and hear the prayer of us sinners, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for in spite of all we've done, you still listen to our prayers, Lord. You still hear our prayers, Lord. We thank you for that, Lord. That the blessing of Abraham is all over our life, Lord. That we are kings, Lord. That there is a king in each and every one of us, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Help us to remember our inheritance, Lord. Help us to remember that the blessing of Abraham is all over our life, Lord that we can continue to move on, continue to be strong, and continue to love how we're supposed to love, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you for all the things that happened this week, Lord. Mm. All those, some not so great, and some that we had that were great, Lord. We thank you because at the end of this week, you're still here, Lord. You still reign, and you still have control, Lord. Help us not to doubt you. Help us to trust you. Help yes, us to have yes. faith, Lord, because you are in control. You already know what we stand in the need of, even Thank before you, we ask it, Lord. You already know what's on our heart, Lord. You already know what we stand in the need of. Thank you, Lord, that you grant those things to us, Lord. And thank you for all those that you grant things for. In spite of everything we do, in spite of how we may take it for granted, Lord, we thank you thank that you. you still help us just to make it through, Lord, just to make it through. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Jesus, I'll never forget. What you done for me, Jesus? I'll never forget how you set me free, Jesus. I'll never forget how you brought me out, Jesus. I'll never forget, no, never. How can I forget what you've done for me? How can I forget? How you set me free, how can I forget that you brought me out, how can I forget, oh never, Jesus I'll never forget what you've done for me, Jesus I'll never forget how you set me free, Jesus I'll never forget how you brought me out, Jesus, I'll never forget, oh, never. How can I forget what you've done for me? How can I forget how you've set me free? How can I forget how you brought me out? How can I forget? Oh, never, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget, oh, never, I'm a soldier. Let me 
die in the army. If I die, let me die in the army of the Lord. If I die, let me die in the army. And I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. Oh, I'm a soldier in the army. I'm a soldier, soldier, soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army. I'll go hut, two, three, four, 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 hut, two.
Shake the devil off, devil under my feet. Shake the devil off, stomp the devil out. Devil under my feet. Shake the devil off in the name, in the name of Jesus. In the name, in the name of Jesus. In the name, in the name of Jesus. Shake the devil off. Amen. Amen. Who's our greeter this morning? Who is our greeter this morning? Okay, Dick and Chris. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I don't see any, any business this morning, so thank the Lord. Uh, on the behalf of our pastor, Gordon Wright Jr., and our overseer, Goldie Wright, bless y'all. Bless y'all for coming, and keep coming, and keep trusting in the Lord. So Amen. this is our time to greet and love one another. So Amen. let's greet each other. Amen. Amen.
Amen. It's tithes and offering time. Amen. You know, I got some friends that um, they're pretty good. They will text me um, if I don't, and I don't even have to be late. It could just be that I didn't pay my bill at the same time as I did the month before. They'll text me and say, hey, Gordon, call me by my first name. Don't forget. Don't forget us. I'm like, all right, I'm not even late. Then they'll send another text when it gets close to the date. Hey, buddy, friend of mine, don't forget. We'd hate to cut your service off. Amen. <laughs> I'm like, well, wait a minute. What's the problem? I thought we were friends. I'm so glad that God does not do us like that. Oh, my goodness. Amen. I get tired of them people sometimes texting when I'm not late. I mean, if I'm late, you can text me. But you can't text me when it's early. Give me a break. Amen. They just do it because they got my number and pretend to be my friend. Then they got the audacity to call a house phone, too. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Let me just pay these people and have them stop. Amen. But God is so good to us. He loves us. It's time for tithes and offering as Sister Agnes is coming. I want you not to forget your building fund. Don't forget the music ministry. Don't forget your tithes and offering. Sister Agnes is coming. Good morning, everyone. It's good to see all of you here this morning. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is the time that we give back a portion, just a small portion, of what God has blessed us with. So the people to my left, would you come forth, forward, followed by the people to my right. Lord, our Heavenly Father, we come and say thank you. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you, O oh God, our Heavenly Father, for blessing us to see another day. Thank you, O oh God, for blessing us to see the year of 2023. Thank you for keeping us safe as we travel through the highways and byways of this world. Keep us, O oh God, our Heavenly Father, in the name of our Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit that the offering that has been given today be used for the upkeep of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen.
trip mm -hmm. on that good old gospel ship mm -hmm. as we go sailing through the air. And when that ship comes in, mm -hmm. I'm going to leave this old world of sin.
Amen. Housekeeping. We'll have a brief meeting at the end of church. Brief meeting at the end of church. Why don't you turn into Exodus chapter 13. Let us look at verses 17 and 18. And when you have it, stand on your feet. Exodus chapter 13, verses 17 and 18. Amen. Exodus chapter 13, verses 17 and 18. And it came to pass, when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God led them not through the way of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, lest peradventure the people repent when they see war, and they return to Egypt. But God led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea, and the children of Israel went up harnessed out of the land of Egypt. Let us pray. Father, we come before you to say thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your word, for your word is true. And your word moves us even today from generations to generations. Now, Father, allow the Holy Spirit to pull the reins on our hearts that we may hear the word and apply it in our life. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for all things that you have given unto us. It is in Jesus' precious name that we pray and say, amen. amen. What do you do when you have been delivered? You move on. And today the topic will be move on, move on, move on. There is a fright that will cause some not to move on. Fright of what deliverance will bring. What is that fright of? Of the unknown. Have you seen how they train elephants? They put a big chain around their ankle in the beginning. And the elephant will struggle against the big chain. But he'll realize he can't get loose. So then they'll put a smaller chain on the elephant. And the elephant will look down at the chain and will have memory of the struggle that he had. So then they'll put even a smaller chain on the elephant till they reach the point where they don't have to put any chain on the elephant at all. They just don't even try to move on. So much so that when they have been freed, you have to take them away from their environment to let them be free. Amen? Some of us need to understand that it's hard to be freed when you are in the same environment. Sometimes you've got to move on to a different environment. Amen? And we know that environment change starts right here, but oftentimes it's physical because it could be a smell, it could be a sound, it could be a look that can take you back into bondage. But today we're learning I've got to move on. All you got to do is fully accept deliverance. Only believe and trust. Terrible thing to be freed and stay in jail, amen? Terrible thing. Some people do that out of fear. Some people do that because they don't know that they have been delivered. But I'm telling you today you must move on. In Isaiah 42, verse 16, it says, and I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. This is the word of the Lord spoken to Israel while they were yet in bondage. 
This is the word of the Lord spoken to us while we are yet in bondage that he will deliver us and bring us to a new way. So don't expect the old. We've got to move on. But how can you move on if you don't know the deliverer? My, my, my. You've got to get to know that deliverer so that you can understand his modes and his ways. Amen. Amen. How much does our deliverer move us on? How does he do it? He does it by spending time with us. As long as it takes. Some things just take time. God has the time. The question is, do you? Do you have the time to get to know him? Will you make time to get to know him? Will you make time to follow him? He loved his people so much in Israel that he said, I'm not taking them the straight way because if I take them the straight short path, they might just turn around and want to go back to bondage. So I had to lead them a different way. Do you want the gift or the gift giver? I always told you it doesn't matter when my wife brings baked goods to you because I got the baker. So because I have the baker, I have all access to any baked good that I want if I act right. Amen? I got to act right in order to have this access and this privilege. I just can't act anyway and expect to receive the gift. Amen? I've got to act in a certain manner that has been established and is pleasing. Do you want the gift or the gift giver? I tell you, take the gift giver. If you take the gift giver, you get more than you thought that you ever would need. In Matthew 22, 37 through 40, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind, with everything. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. It's love. But he said you got to love God with everything that you got. He didn't put conditions on when you love him. He just said you have to love him. What has love got to do with it? Everything. Amen. Amen. Love your God. He loveth you. He doesn't want you to perish. Will you follow him? When you have accepted God as your deliverer through Christ Jesus, we need to again understand him better. Did you know God has a plan for your life? You might not understand it. But trust him, talk to him, he does have a plan for you. It is not the plan that is for me, it is the plan that is for you. I can remember when Justin read this scripture out of Jeremiah, and I thought, I don't think the people heard him. 29 and 11, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. That means God loves you so much. This is what he told Jeremiah speaking to the Israelites again. While yet in bondage, he said, I'm telling you how much I love you and this plan I have for you while you are in captivity. It's one thing to be freed or relieved of a problem and understand that the Lord loves you. But you got to understand that even when you are in bondage and are in the process of being delivered, he still loves you. His love does not change. It remains the same. 
will you love the Lord? Hey, you might not know your plan, but he knows. Does it hurt you not to know when you are following the master? Does it hurt you when you say, I don't know where he's leading me, but I'm following him and I trust him? Will you love him in the midst of your pain? Will you remember this scripture that he spoke to Israel and is speaking to us now that he has thoughts toward you of peace and not evil? Will you remember this scripture when all hell is breaking loose all around you, all inside of you? Will you remember his word that, wait a minute, this is not the expected end. I'm having trouble finding peace, but he promised me that he would give me peace in an expected end. We just got to be sure that you're following the master. And can I tell you that if you don't spend time with him, you won't know him to know whether you are following him or not. Satan has studied when you were sleeping the Bible. <laughs> Satan has studied you when you said, I don't have time for the Lord, I'm tired, I'm hurting, I'm in pain. He understands my heart. He knows I love him. I just don't have time right now for him. Satan is studying. He takes the time to figure out where your weak points are. He's studying you. And he pushes those buttons. And what he tries to do is stand in front of you so that you can't even see the light. How does he do it? He separates you. Amen. Amen. He separates you one by one. Because he knows if you stand together, you're too strong. He can try to pull you out, but the others will pull you back in. But if he can just get you by yourself, he said, I can get you. And forget, have you forget that the Lord has a plan for your life? Somebody said, but that plan has not come through. How long shall I wait? Is God short of his promise? Never. If he said it will come to pass, it will. So you wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Amen? You fear not. Fear not. He promised. Will you wait on him? God has a plan for you. Did you know God enjoys spending time with us? He loves his creation. He just wants his creation to love him. Ephesians 2 and 10, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. He has good works for you to do even before you were born. He ordained it. He just wants to spend some time with you. Will you spend some time with the Lord or are you too busy? Too busy with the gifts that we asked for that he gave us and now we curse the gift giver. We don't mean to hurt him. We really don't. We don't. That's not our intention. It just happens. And Satan smiles. Keep thinking that. Keep thinking some things just happen. It's intentional, Satan said. I came to kill and destroy you. I didn't come to play with you. I just hope you continue to play with your God. Did you know that some of us are playing with our God? And he is not a toy. He is the Holy One. He is the beginning. He is the through. He is the end that we can't see. He is the Holy One. 
Will you get to know him? Did you know he loved us even as we were most ugly? We were all ugly at one point in our life. Ugly, amen. Sin has made us ugly. Sin has made us not delightful. And sin has held up the trick mirror. Y'all know the trick mirror. You've been to a carnival before. Stand before it. It makes you look real short. Makes you look real thin. Makes you look real big. Makes you look real wide. Makes you look very narrow makes you look very tall. It distorts the actual picture of who you are. That's what sin does to us. It distorts us, amen, from a picture of who we actually are. And yet, we believe the picture versus the word of who we are. But I got good news. God said, I'm not going to leave you in that state. Hey, I provided you with repentance to get right again. Amen? And we know if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Did you know God is omniscient? He is all-knowing. So, what do you gain when you do not confess your sins. He already knows it. He just wants to know if you will come to him and honor him with confession. What do you gain when you do not confess your sin? You make Satan very happy when you do not confess your sin. Because he says, oh, they don't believe what the Lord said. He already told them that if they confess their sins, I am God and am faithful to forgive us of our sins. They so caught up on not forgiving each other, they can't even forgive themselves. I got them right where I want them. I'm ready to destroy. Don't make Satan that happy. Don't give in to him. Don't make it that easy. Let him know that, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. The Bible says, not me, but the Bible says that if I confess, he is faithful. Who is he? The God. He is faithful and just, not only to forgive me, but he's able to cleanse me of all, not some, but all unrighteousness. So here we have the Israelites. God said, I love them so much, I, I don't want them to stray. So I got to lead them another way. But I got a, I got a way to sweep. I'm going to still bring them out to the expected end because I am God. I'm just going to spend some time with them so they can get to know me even the more. And you know what God says, lastly, that he is doing? He is moving us. How is he moving us? And I still feel planted in similar situation. In the same situation. Still live at the same house. Still live around the same people. He ain't moved the people. I'm still there. How is he moving us? But yet he says he is moving us. God does not send us. He goes with us. How does he do that? Well, thank be unto God that he allowed the Holy Spirit to be in us. And sometimes when we don't know how to move, it is the Holy Spirit that gives us that push in the right direction. Now, we don't acknowledge him as the Holy Spirit. What we say is that, man, I'm so glad. I don't know how. Something just happened. I was so lucky. There was a chance. I mean, things just worked out. It was the Holy Spirit that was pushing us. I, didn't, I wasn't even going to go for that job. And, you know, I just took a chance and I got the job. No, no, it wasn't no chance. It was the Holy Spirit that said, go, go. Well, you know, I almost had an accident, but no, 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 no. It was the Holy Spirit that said, no, no, not now. 
You know, I almost had another accident with my life where I was about to sin mightily, but it was the Holy Spirit that said, no, 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 not now. The God in you is mightier than the Satan in the world. Stand up. Let the God in you stand up and your enemies be scattered. He leads us on a path just for us. He knows some of us would turn away if he took us the straight path. But you know what I learned? Some things you just don't appreciate until you get involved. Let me explain. My parents, I begged them for leather tennis shoes when that was a popular thing, you know, as a kid growing up, right? And they bought me some leather tennis shoes, and for some reason, they just didn't last long. I won't even say that they were cheap or fake. They just didn't last long. You know, so I'd beg them for some more and get another pair. They'd be nice, and they didn't last long either, Brother Clifford. But I don't know who it was. It probably was my father who said, well, I think you should buy the next pair. And when I bought the next pair, I asked the guy before I left the shoe store, I had never done this before, do you have any shoe polish for leather tennis shoes? And he said, shoe polish? I said, yeah, I got to take care of this. I asked him, well, do you think if I buy a toothbrush, that'll work as I clean these tennis and he looked at me like, what are you talking about? I was like, hey, man, I'm putting out my money for this thing. I got to keep this. So I was at home on the weekends brushing my tennis shoes, the dirt off of them. Hey, man, I would take time to shake the dirt off, scrub it off. And then if I scratched them, oh, got to polish them. Let me polish, get that scuff out. Hey, Amen. I took time. And do you know those cheap tennis I bought lasted longer than any other shoes that my parents had bought me? Could it be that I had more appreciation when I had to put something into it and I realized that it cost me something? So I wanted to make sure I took care of it. Amen. Do you realize that the Lord loves us so much that he gave us his all? He gave us his son, Jesus Christ, to save us. And because he gave us his son, he said, I just love you. I just can't let you go. See, I put so much into you that I just can't let you go. Will you love me even the more? What God wants from us is our love because our love will bring about obedience. Obedience to what? To his will and his way. We'll find out his will for our life. We will tell a dying world. We will become his witnesses. We will be obedient to him. We'll do whatever he wants us to do. But how much do you love him? Do you know so many people question me if we were going to have church on Christmas Day? I got questioned a lot. But yet there was one man who told me, if I can, I want to be there in church on Christmas Day. He said, I, I'm going to press. I'm, I'm really, I'm really going to. I don't know how. I don't feel good. But I'm going to be there. Now, this one man who knew that that was the last time he would be in the house of the Lord. But he was clear that if there's one thing that I desire of the Lord is to dwell in the beauty of the Lord all the days of my life. So he said, I just want to be there. You know, there was another man who told me when I look at all that God has done for me, I really just can't thank him enough. I owe him all the praise and I can't say thank you enough. He said, if nothing else comes my way, I still have not 
thanked him enough. I don't care what happens to me, but I've got to thank him enough. Amen? What will you do? Will that be your testimony? One thing I desire of the Lord is to be in his presence. That even when I don't feel good, I want to be in his presence. I want to be in his presence if I'm in his hospital bed. I want to be in his presence if I'm in a nursing home. I want to be in his presence all the days of my life. And then I'm going to have gratitude. I'm not going to be complaining about what didn't happen. I'm focused on what he has done for me. And I tell him, thank you. He has moved you on. Recognize the move. Get busy with the move. You already delivered. Now you've got to move on. Movement takes place, takes place in your heart. The movement of the Lord takes place in your heart first. That's how he can have you in what looks like the same place, same position, but yet you have moved. Are you willing to move? Hey, are you willing to forgive someone who has sinned against you? Well, they didn't ask for forgiveness. That wasn't my question. My question is, are you willing to forgive them? They didn't have to repent to you, but are you willing to go up to them and say, you know, I forgive you. I didn't like what you did. It hurt me. It penetrated me. But I love the Lord so much that I know I've got to forgive. Forgive. I want to be like him. Will you forgive? Will you say, I'm moving on? I love you even the more, but I want you to know I forgive you. Are you willing or are you holding a grudge? Are you holding that heavy grudge anchor that will do nothing but kill you? You will drown holding that grudge. Let it go. Move on. God has called you to move on to greater things. Do you know that you begin moving before it's visible to anybody? People will look at you and say, you ain't doing nothing. You ain't moving. And you say, but I feel different. I, I, I feel like either I'm growing or I'm moving. Something is different. When God says yes, it is yes. I don't care how many people tell you no. But when God yells yes, it is so. Only believe. As we stand up all over the building, will you move? It's time to move. He's delivered us. Did you take the time to get to know him? He said, I'm ready for you to move. Why don't you move right now? It's time. Holy Spirit said, I'm carrying you. Don't make me pull and drag you. But his word has got to come true. I know people did you wrong. I know you in pain. But we're going to start with one person to get right, and that person is you. But what did I do? They did everything. No, oh, no, no, no. They didn't do everything wrong to you. you. You have something in this as well. Are you ready to move on? Move on from a weakness to a strength. It takes strength to love somebody, amen? amen. Take a lot of strength to love somebody that's attacking you, that thinks they are attacking you. If they knew who you only are, they would repent unto you. If they knew who lives inside of you, they would fear what they are doing to you. But because we cover up the Holy Spirit and we don't allow him to rise, they don't know who you are. Let that Holy Spirit arise. Let his enemies be scattered. You know, not every fight you're going to have to fight. Some, you're just going to have to sit still 
and see the salvation of the Lord? Are you willing to sit still and let him carry you through? How long? I don't know how long. All I know is that if he said it, he's immutable. It has to come to pass. Will you come unto Jesus now? If you're saved, you get all of these benefits. If, you're not, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, hell can be your home. But you do have a free gift that's waiting for you. You just need to redeem it. How do you redeem it? You admit that you are a sinner, that you need a Savior, that God sent his only begotten Son, the Christ, to save us. He lived a life of perfection. He completed all of the laws and commandments. And then he died. He died because the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. So we got a chance to rise again. So it was the Father who raised the Son so that we too can be raised. And he went to prepare a place for us. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, now is the time. Come unto Jesus. Come unto him right now. In your heart, just say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I haven't accepted you. I haven't believed you. But right now, this day, I open my heart to you. Forgive me of my sins. Turn me. Help me to follow you. I love you even the more now. I know that you love me even when I was most unlovable. I thank you, Lord. Help me to move on. I thank you for delivering me. I couldn't see that you had delivered me. But I thank you for what you're doing in my life. Thank him and follow him. His yoke is easy. Amen. Amen. Drop your burden. Is there one? Let us pray. Father, I come before you to say thank you. I thank you, Father, for this day. I thank you for all that you have done. I thank you for being true to your word. I thank you for being faithful. Help us to be faithful even the more. Help us to love you. Help us to be quick to repent. Help us to know that repentance makes us stronger because you clean us up of all unrighteousness. Help us to love our God with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind. Let us know it begins there. Then love our neighbors. Help us, Lord. Help us to accept your deliverance. Not worry about the path that is taking us, but that you're moving us. And most of all, we thank you for not just moving us, but for being with us so you're leading us. You are the good shepherd. We thank you. Now, Father, help us to always be obedient to your will, always moving in the direction that you would have us to go, seeking you all the days of our life. We thank you for your Son. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that indwells. And we thank you for that day that you'll call us home. We don't know when, but whenever it comes, we'll be thankful and we'll be happy to go home. We thank you, Father, for all things. It is in Jesus Christ we pray. And now may the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with these people henceforth and forevermore. Let the church say amen. 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 God bless you. We're going to have a brief meeting.